So it's about this documenting rather than purely, you know, off your own back, just creating. And it's, and then it's much easier. It's much easier to do because you're already doing this stuff, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, it does make a lot more sense. I've been doing hair for a number of years now and I, I've, I started my hair business about six years ago. So I, I just wanted to build like a platform for my hair business and I'm in the process of currently designing a website the the website is complete I've done the photo shoot I've added my sales to the website but because I am a small business and I don't have consistent sales on a say weekly or monthly basis it's just here and when even though I do have a small clientele it's, it's just a number of questions in terms of registering my business what um what type of things do I need to look out for in regards to um what like in regards to expanding my platform and just to start just like a starting stone for starting a new business that is that has like a website as well yeah that sounds good so are you currently a sole trader right now yeah sweet so i personally would say that if soul trading is is working out for you okay right now then you could stay as a soul trader but still have a brand name right so you could call yourself whatever right and it still be a soul trader so then there's less paperwork with having you know less kind of corporation tax and all that stuff there's less um that's paperwork you're doing exactly yep. what you're doing every every january you submit your tax return and, and that can stay the same then once you yeah. start kind of really building in kind of regular income and you might just say okay if i'm earning more than you know maybe you say if i'm earning more than 12 grand a year right because that's roughly the the tax bracket um that you start paying tax on if you're earning or getting 12 grand of sales a year i will convert yeah. to be a limited business because once that happens, it's cheaper to start paying yourself through a business as an employee. But naturally, instantly you do that, you have to pay for a bank account. There's a business bank account. You know, even though there are some free ones, like Starling is great for that. You then have to think about, okay, do I have to pay a, an accountant to do payroll so you get yourself yeah. a wage? And then the, the additional thing that you'll do, is, so you'll typically pay yourself something in the realms of like eight grand in in a salary and then the rest in dividends um which can be in an unlimited amount and then tax wise you pay um 7.5 percent on the first bit of your dividends and then when it goes over a th certain threshold you pay like 30 odd percent or, or like the larger threshold so that's the best tax efficient way but i would only recommend that if you're over you know like 12 grand a year like are, are you over that that kind of mark anyway not yet not yet yeah so I, I wouldn't bother stressing yourself with any extra pay, uh, paperwork because it's hard enough you know doing it for yourself anyway with your own tax return and, and stuff so i'd be like there's no rush to do it there's no necessarily like uh, drastic benefits because you're still expensing stuff anyway aren't you as a sole trader yeah Emma, is that right so you, you yeah. won't get any benefits the only benefits you'll get is when you're at a certain velocity so you can start being more tax efficient with the, the amount of money you pay yourself and also it doesn't stop you from hiring employees in the sense of you wouldn't hire an employee you would just get someone to help you out as a freelancer and you just pay them you know a set amount for doing some hair or you would pay them per hour so you can still do that as a sole trader it's um like when you become an employee or when you become an employer and then you wanted employees then yes like official full-time employees then you would do the the company route as well does that all make sense yeah it yeah. does it does i understand okay so in terms of me um now expanding my brand and mm -hmm. putting it out there on social media do you have any like tips as to what to do because i see a lot of hair businesses now using klarna and clear pay or zip as a way to to allow your um 
the customers to pay off for the product monthly or weekly. Um, mm. Do you have to be a registered business to use those companies? Uh, chances are, yeah, chances are you'll have to have some agreement for the kind of the pay pay monthly approach. And, and what I would probably say is, you know, the kind of ultimately from what I hear from Kimmer, you're exceptional at what you do. So yeah. I, I think in a lot of ways, it's just a case of increasing what you have right now and then building oh. in the kind of the pay monthly stuff later on because there, there are oh. extra complexities and ultimately you might like the ca you, you want cash flow right you want cash flow. Mm -hmm. you don't necessarily want someone to pay over three months because you want it here and now and if you already yeah. have been having customers like that it means that you're not necessarily missing out on an opportunity because it's a it's a nicety isn't it so i, I would say right now maybe if you're wanting to kind of like the goal might be and obviously you can set this for yourself because you understand your business more it might be like hey let's just keep doing what i'm doing but get more clients so if well actually it'd be great to know how you currently price and how you currently take payment because even if you just do a slight refinement where you say okay everybody's paying me through an online transfer through this paypal account right that's the the refinement rather than the hey here are my bank details you know there's a slight professionalism tweak when you're giving someone um like a paypal link or something and, and paypal can be reasonably cheap i don't think they take any fees um if you do it as like a personal account you know yeah okay okay so you would just uh, you would just um because with my website at the moment it is just set up where um it's they just pay with their debit card oh, through sweet. the account yeah and and that, is that a, a bank transfer yes is... yeah so they yeah it would just be it would just be a bank transfer but the only thing what i've realized with my website is mm. i have i don't know because i'm using a wix website i don't mm. once they paid I'm, I'm trying to work out where how do i attach an account so i can receive the money yeah yeah and i think that's the the difficulty that there is um i don't have much experience with wix but i have experience with wordpress which is a similar web builder and typically oh. what happens with wordpress and i'm not saying you switch i'm just giving you the um the kind of example of my experience you would attach something like paypal and then they would pay yeah. for that product and then you get an email saying hey someone's paid and then it's instantly in your paypal account so it's all matched up to that email address right or an account of of some sorts and i, I would try oh. and shift away from doing bank transfers to try and get it a little bit more formal and, and paypal if it's the right type of paypal account like basically a personal paypal account then you can kind of get away with not having to pay any fees on it as well so then yeah. you're not missing out in trying to refine some of the kind of the ease because bank transfers you then have to go in and check if they've paid right yeah which is a little bit harder so i think it's a little bit nicer if you're able to have it all together with something as simple as paypal and, and typically wix have a great support system so if you're able yeah. to reach out to their support you'd be like hey i'm wanting to get people to pay through paypal how do i do that and there might be some directions on on making that happen and then it'll be a little bit more streamlined because all you're wanting to do is sometimes you know friction is you know doing a bank transfer and you might be thinking yeah. oh well maybe people prefer paying monthly well actually maybe paypal is the easiest first step then once you get enough people paying through paypal just in a much much simpler way because typically most people are familiar and have paypal then you can be like okay yeah. now we can start offering some new ways of paying but i would only say that if you had a, a good volume because right now you personally might not benefit mm -hmm from someone paying monthly versus someone paying straight away up front with all the amount would that be kind of true yeah that makes yeah. sense i guess so, okay. so so don't don't compromise your own situation right now for the customer's yeah. benefit yet so i'm not saying don't do it at all but i would say don't worry about it right now because naturally what you're doing is working it's not as if you've got zero clients right so what you're doing yeah. is working which means there is an audience for the people that will pay up front full amount as a bank transfer so let's see yeah. if we can make it easier with paypal so it's much much simpler then you know let's start building up velocity from the kind of the the, the clientele like how how do you get your 
your people. And I think that would be more interesting. Then you can worry yeah. about the complexities of, you know, having a business, you know, and, and kind of setting up all the, the kind of the additional payment mechanisms as well. Because I think, you know, it's, it's hard running a business on your own. Um, so yeah. you want to be like really respectful and kind to yourself because ultimately this is just a massive to-do list for you, isn't it? To kind of plan yeah. through. So it's a case of balancing, you know, the things will give you least effort, maximum reward. So it's just finding those things first. And then over time, you can introduce the new stuff. Okay, yes, that's, thank you so much, because that, that makes it a lot of things now a lot more clear. So in terms of, say, social media, I've got yeah. a... I've got a really bad habit of being consistent, losing a lot of engagement to, mm. and then I'm one, one month I'm really consistent. And then I stop for several months due to personal issues. And then yeah. I'm, I'm my, my, my engagement goes down or I lose followers. So what advice could you advise in terms of just keeping, um, my engagement because I, I don't really understand um, the whole target market no not target market the engagement and the audience I get mm. confused sometimes with all of that yeah On that's so let me just tell you that this is completely human and it's completely fine because you're doing multiple things right you're, you're, you're trying to run the business you're trying to you know serve customers you're trying to do all this stuff and you're trying to reach the expectation of you know typically what happens is and this is my game as well i'll see someone else in exactly the same field and they're posting every week and i'm like oh well i've not posted in a month like this is awful isn't it and i think it's a case of you know trying to remove any sort of comparison that you might have because it's very easy to get into that which then makes you ultimately worse so if you can stay strong about you know just focusing on your clients and your story and your messages and the things you want to post also think about the the simplest possible thing that you could do and just do it once a week so don't overcomplicate things don't try and kind of seek perfection ultimately focus on getting it out rather than yeah. getting it right and i trust that you'd get it right anyway so trust that you do good because you have clients that are really happy with you and ultimately that is a tell to say whether or not you're good enough so, so you're just letting more people know about the good stuff you're doing so what i would like what would be great to know is like what have you tried and what platforms are we talking about specifically um at the moment i'm just um it's mainly it's just instagram so yeah. i have i haven't got a snapchat um i do have a facebook account for my hair page but facebook confuses me when it comes to running a business on there sometimes that's um, fine but yeah. mainly just uh, mainly just instagram and just um for example i've realized that um i mainly just put up pictures of wigs when it comes to my wigs they they do sell and i make sure that the picture's clear and it's a lot more information but i feel like for me personally I've noticed that I lack a lot of videos on mm. my, my clients will say, oh, Jay, how do I put on a wig or how do I lay a wig like how you laid it when you when I left my um, your house? And yeah, for me to make a video on how to do that, I feel like my editing skills are really bad, but I feel like that's what my page lacks on is I'm finding it hard to really engage with my clients through social media, I can engage with them when they're in my house because they can see what I'm uh, um, what I'm doing, and I, I'm, mm. very, I'm a very talkative person. But through Instagram, I just feel they just see a class hair and wigs. They don't really know the person behind it. Mm. Yeah, that makes sense. So I think the quickest way to to solve the issue of like I'm not sure if my editing skills are up to scratch. What what yeah. I typically do is if I'm going to record a video, I basically record it until it's decent and then I yeah. don't edit it. And sometimes I don't edit it <laughs> in the sense of I will do a two minute talk or something yeah. and I'll um and I'll hmm, but I don't edit it. And that's one way to not worry about whether or not you're a good or a bad editor. 
by just kind of producing it until it's good enough in its in its form. So if you're already speaking to clients in your house about this stuff, yeah. then potentially yeah. you could be like, hey, would you remind would you mind just recording me explaining this? Then one, you can keep the video and two, yeah. I can publish it on social. So right now, like this, I'd be like, so this is how you do it. You do it like this way. And then if you put it on like this, you can align it like this. You know, you do this. Happy? Yeah. Cut, okay. Right? Then you would cut the front and the back. And then the bit you're talking is fine then, isn't it? So all you need yeah. to do is just trim the, the start of it, which is reasonably easy to do. If you have an iPhone, then it's quite easy to trim at the, at the start of a video. And you can trim the back of a video as well. And then you just post it. Don't worry about putting you know subtitles and captions and music like simplicity simplicity because ultimately you can do this later in a week's time when you have you know the the energy and the, and the time to make a, a nice edit of it you could take exactly the same video put some extra captions on it or some extra kind of like blurbs or something and then post it yeah. again because social is very like in the moment right if no one's seen yeah. that video just now then it's fine for you to post it in a month's time because it's just a timeline thing. So yeah. I would kind of bring down the bar of your own expectations of your own stuff because yeah. you already talk about it in the moment. So just get them to record it. So long as the lighting's good in that room um, and you could set something like that up, right? You know, even if you just had a simple ring light or it was decent lighting, you could explain like, here's how you put it on. And then there you go. You have your client engaged in recording something one for their own benefit then you could be like hey would you mind sending it to me i'll put it up on socials so then you can you can have it there as well and i think that would be easy because you're one you're already doing it and two like it's then you don't need to worry about whether or not you're a good or a bad editor you know does that make sense yeah it does it makes a lot of sense i never thought and, and then and then it feels like you're pulling off the weight right this heaviness yeah. of like, oh, you've got to edit really well because you've seen these other videos and you've, you've got to do it in this format and it's got to be every week or it's got to be every day. If you can basically change, like if you can avoid thinking about creating and think about documenting, then that will be a game changer. And what I mean by that is like, not necessarily sitting here, right, I'm going to create a video about how to change a whip, right, I'm going to edit it together and film these different parts. Like that's creating, right? But if you're documenting, Documenting is you're already telling your clients how to do it in the moment and you're documenting that that's happening, which then is your piece of content, is your video. So I think that, and as well, another thing, if you're in the house and if they're trying on the wig, then you could record them just literally doing a, a spin, right? Yeah. If they felt comfortable, that is content, right? And then if you tagged that person in it, be like hey look at Kim and looking great you know this this wig was like blah 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 you know you you put in some some detail that, that that's a way to one you know include your clients and have your clients as people that will advocate for advocate for you which they already are doing I'm sure as well you know okay yeah that makes a lot of sense yeah I never thought of it just using regular customers and just I, it, and that's great like I can already tell just in your voice that you feel yeah. like ah cool yeah I can yeah. relax yeah. and not yeah. be you know uh, like tight and like I need to do this in this certain way and it's all about chilling out doing it the easiest possible way no one is gonna have a gripe no one's gonna be like oh well you didn't put effort into this because it's not about effort it's about just the the how-to and I think you're right like if you want more video content the how-to is great and you could do it while you're even if you're uh, bleaching hair or, or something right or coloring hair you could film yourself coloring hair because you're doing this for a client and it doubles up as one you have to do this anyway because you're doing it for a client because they're turning up at six o'clock and yeah. also you could just talk over it talk to yourself while you're doing it and that could be another video so it's about this documenting rather than purely you know off your own back just creating and it's and then it's much easier it's much easier to do because you're already doing this stuff aren't you yeah yeah that makes sense <laughs> yeah 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 it does make a lot more sense I just feel like I've got so many ideas and then I'm just getting frustrated with myself because I have so many ideas and then I, I don't do I don't do any of them 
and that's fine i i've i've been in the same boat i sometimes like jump into the boat a couple of months and then come back out the you know it's something that always happens and i i guess the the one thing is like write them all down it's fine yeah. that you don't get to them write them all down and then also when you do get to them you might not feel that like okay this idea a might require a lot of time and things but what's the like the simplest first iteration of this first idea it doesn't have to be whistles and bells and glamorous and all this stuff it could be really really simple and i think that again is how you execute more often is by yeah. making it manageable and super small you can always add in detail later you can always you know produce exactly the same how to video 2 weeks later with some extra stuff and no one will shout at you no one will bat an eyelid no one will notice like well hang on a second you know you did the no one really notices right it's about getting out that information in the most manageable way for for you personally you know yeah that makes that makes a lot of sense yeah, yeah i think i've been this time i, I want to bring out my um my website it would have been good to bring it out before black friday so i'm mm -hmm. just sitting down today while i've got a day off to just really go through my website make sure that there's an account linked to yeah. my website and then just making sure all the money is going into an account yes yeah and i think just the simplicity of that will just make you feel good right because it's a, a refinement of process and chances are that process of checking that someone's paid on a bank transfer is a is a little bit long so yeah, if you're able yeah. to do that for Black Friday, that's great. But I, I would also say, you know, typically as solo business owners, like we put a lot of pressure on ourselves. So if it doesn't quite come together, that's completely fine. So long as you post on socials, like, hey, we have this Black, Black Friday offer, you know? So yeah. it, it, it doesn't necessarily need to be like, oh, it's this or nothing, you know? And I think yeah. it's always about, you know, what can you do to, to make business feel lighter? Because business is yeah. really heavy, right? There's a lot of things to do. A lot of the time, there's more things to do than you have physical time for and physical energy for. Um, so yeah, focusing on, on getting something simple together is great. But also, if that doesn't quite happen for for the Friday, that that's fine too. You know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I need to stop putting a lot of pressure on myself because I feel like because I it's been a a long um a long length of time since I've put out a video I think the last video I put out was in March I'm just watching my followers go down mm. and I just really I've got so much content that I want to put out there and so much ideas I just think I just need to just start putting it out slowly and just letting it flow and then the yeah. engagement and the consistency will build back up and don't worry about like if you have ideas like if you're able to in the moment use the like the that buzz in the moment to just record something really rough unedited and not worry too much about the perfection you'll feel really good that you've ridden that wave and also as you know like in you consuming um like instagram for your own like self and and, and what i see as well i much prefer prefer seeing roughness not not physical but like just hey i did this in the moment like this is it because it's always about the, the message right it's not necessarily oh well you know they didn't have the makeup on or their hair wasn't right it's kind of like the message or what you're trying to say is the most important thing and it's nice to see a, a realism because what we all know you know there's the whole push of edited photos you know perfected videos and all this stuff um so i think if you're able to you know bring down you can still do all that stuff as well but if you can ride yeah. them the, in the moment, I'm inspired for this. I'm going to do this real short 30 second video just so it's out there. And then it's like, it's literally like going to the gym. It's like a muscle, right? Creativity or like execution, getting stuff out there is just like muscles. So you're not going to go straight to the heaviest stuff and try and like lift. You're going to go for the smallest weights possible and do a couple of reps. So always kind of bring down the bar. What's the smallest possible thing you can do and not worry about the, the perfection because that can, the, the quality is one, I'm sure you would do great anyway from just getting something out there. It's not going to be bad, you know, because I trust that you're a professional. You are a professional, right? You're good at what you do. Yeah. And then the second thing is you can always iterate iterate in more kind of um, more stuff to refine it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's true.
yeah thank you so much it's all right I think a lot of the time we just need the encouragement to be like you're doing great don't like like basically be kind to yourself because you're the one and only like the best employee that you have so if you if you had an employee like you how would you treat them you would literally tell yourself hey chill let's do the simplest way to get this like don't worry I know there's these 20 ideas that we want to get to we'll get to them but let's find the lightest way to do it you know yeah yeah, that's true. It's true. I never thought of it in that type of way. Like, treat myself like an employee and take it easy. <laughs> yeah. And, and, it, and like, the distinction here is, like, it's not that you therefore don't do anything because you're relaxing and, and you're chilling, right? It, it's not that. It's, like, let's find the right, you know, execution and the right method to get the right kind of output so the frustration stops happening and you're just getting out there and you're kind of, like, getting a bit of momentum and, and a bit of flow and we, and we all go through this stuff like I, I, I've I think a lot of this is you know business is a hundred percent mindset a hundred percent mindset really and I think it's yeah. about trying to get into that right space because the more pressure you feel the, like the less likely you are to put out stuff and the more pressure you feel you, you know the more you feel like oh the longer I it is before you're just putting more weight on yourself so what's that kind of um you know, unclogging that can make it much, much easier, much, much lighter. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. that's true. I think as as well, what, what I'd love to do, um, just like in, in wrapping up a little, I, I'd love to give you, you know, another three sessions if, if you'd be up for that. And we can talk about anything in those sessions and um, like like what we've done today. And yeah. Um, and yeah, hopefully they'll they'll be helpful. A lot of the time we just... You know, everybody needs this encouragement. Even I need this encouragement from for my own ventures. You know, so I'm uh, I'm really glad you reached out. It's, I hope you found the, the chat useful. Like, even if you didn't yeah. find anything that I say um, useful, I I enjoy these chats because it's about you know me encouraging you in what you're doing. Like, what you're doing is really really cool. I like guess it's it's, yeah. it's hard running a business. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, you're doing great. You're doing great. Yeah. Yeah, because I, it's that this is and my business at the moment is not just my main job because I support victims of domestic violence. I use my business as more of like a therapy. So yeah. it's something that I have control of as something that I enjoy because my job, because my job is so frontline, it's just more about advising others, getting um, individuals out of traumatic situations. Anything is about me doing for others and not really taking enough time out to start sorting out what I need to do and doing mm. something that I that I'm trying to balance the two I think you can always get trapped in a because you're so helpful for others you forget yeah. to kind of look after yourself and that's yeah. age old kind of like you know tip, typically that that falls on you know women falls on mothers falls on black women as well that kind yeah. of you know making sure everyone else is fine but forget and kind of not um kind of look after yourself and, and be kind to yourself and i think it's a a case of finding that balance i think what you said about the what you do as a day-to-day job the fact that this is a side hustle is even like even more awesome right that you're trying to make this happen again that's even harder to to make happen because you're trying to juggle more stuff i would say like maybe one piece of content is is starting to drip feed a little bit of your work obviously there's confidentiality so i'm not saying yeah. telling stories of people but yeah. The fact that you just say, I literally do hair because it's therapeutic, right? Like yeah. that, that's a really interesting thing. And yeah. it can, I'm sure you've thought about this as well, but that, that's your story, right? That's the, the origin story as superheroes would have of, of probably how you, you do it and how you go into it. So don't be afraid to, to kind of share some of that stuff as, as well, because that's, that's the really interesting thing. And people more likely to engage with that stuff. And oh, by the way, I do hair right yeah. it's that kind of thing yeah awesome. that's good I never in that type of way too it's, it's I think it's more about understanding who a class hair is and I think once people know who is behind the brand and how much I do enjoy doing hair and the passion that I have I feel that they will feel a lot more comfortable in ordering because it's not just somebody that just wants to make money and put a wig on your head there's more of a story behind yeah. the brand and it's like 
it's fine to have it's fine to make money like everybody needs to pay yeah. rent as well so don't feel that it's like yeah. negative but you're right in having the face to the name and a bit of the personable stuff it just makes it easier to engage with that because it's all about finding the relatability right and that's the usp the usp is that you're literally working a full-time job i'm doing the side hustle well there's a bunch of people that can relate to that you know the usp is like hey i'm working through this stuff and finding this as therapy well there's a load of people that might relate to trying to find something like that so i think yeah what you have is really valuable again you you know that you want to get this out and i'm sure your ideas have all incorporated this stuff and, and maybe the the first kind of thing to get out there is interviews are really really simple in the sense of you know if you got someone someone you really like one of your friends get them to just video interview you about some questions you've written down that are basically about how you started like why do you like hair like what what do you why do you do this stuff you know five questions get that person to ask you those questions record it in a video and then post it you know like it, it could be really easy to to then come up with content because already you don't need to rehearse it. It's on the tips of your fingers because this is your passion, right? So that's another way to, to kind of create some really easy content. Just get one of your friends to ask you these questions that you've written down. You know, those then become videos. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, I never thought of that. And that would be really, really good. Mm. Well, yeah, I think that's, yeah. what, what you could do, I mean, yeah. next time, if yeah. if if you're up for meeting again in, in another half hour for next week, I would yeah. be more than happy to, you know, ask you five questions that you've given to me. And then yeah. you could use this video that we have and you just cut it for social. Obviously, you can cut me out of it <laughs> and it could just be <laughs> or you could be like, hey, I was interviewed on this platform. Yeah. You know, I'd be like, hey, like, tell me, like, why did, why did you get into here? Like we could do it like in a semi-professional kind of way and then then you have your answers and then you cut your answers and put it on social so like you're going to have a half an hour with me anyway so I'm I'm more than happy to do that if, if that's of help that would be great <laughs> you know it, it's all yeah. about you know documenting like in some yeah. ways this is the benefit of having this recorded yeah you could cut and just use the audio you don't need to have your face in it you, like and just put a video uh, put a, a photo to it or a video to it so yeah, I think yeah. document rather than creating just brings the pressure down because you're doing a yeah. lot of stuff and you're doing a lot yeah. of stuff really, really well and you want to keep on yeah. doing that. So it's all about just yeah. bringing the pressure down and being kind to yourself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. thank you so much. I really need no, this. <laughs> we, we all need this stuff. I, I need this stuff as well. So don't feel like, oh, it's just me and this thing. A lot of people are in the same boat. They just don't tell you. You know, they, they just, yeah. people, business owners just don't talk about this. But I can tell you a lot of people feel some of the same, same things, you know. So we all need to be yeah. telling each other, reminding each other of this stuff. Um, so, yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dan. That's fine. Awesome. Good chatting to you. Speak soon. Thank you. You too. Have a, good Have a nice Thank you for listening to Dan Ryland's podcast today. Hopefully you've took something away from this session. And please do tweet Dan or DM him via Twitter or Instagram or look at his LinkedIn if you have any more questions about today or anything about your personal business that you might be struggling about that Dan might be able to help. Hope you have found this enjoyable and see you next time.